At the turn of the century, artificial intelligence was nothing to talk about, but it's now a reality. We're here at the Caledonian University to see how they are researching and progressing artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is using computers, making computers intelligent. It's programming them so that they can do things that we would consider to be intelligent if people did them. So, if a person does something and we consider that to be intelligent, like for example play chess to a high standard, or medical diagnosis, a doctor working out what kind of disease you have, if we can make a computer do that, we'd have to say it's intelligent. So we're, that's what we try to do in AI, but it's quite difficult. Games use lots of different techniques to um, have AI exist in them. There's a lot of cheats that are used in games typically. So you'll find that like uh, narrative story driven games tend to have a lot of sort of shortcuts, a lot of scripted sequences. Um, there's a lot of games that use more advanced systems for doing AI and there's a lot of, historically, a lot of games that have tried really sort of tricky things. I mean, a lot of people still talk about games like Creatures and Black and White as being um, big showcase games that really uh, tried something ambitious. Um, so the more human tasks the machine can take and work appropriately as it would have been a human being, the better for us. So the final goal of achieving the the overarching artificial intelligence that behaves entirely as a human being, I think is complete nonsense. Um, getting tasks overtaken by an entities that behave certain tasks, they can commit, they can do certain tasks as human beings, that's a lot more within reach. There are other types of intelligence for computers, like the ability to have feelings, as David will explain. Well, emotional intelligence is, um, you're here in the Emotion Lab, at the university and we study, we call it affective computing really, but one way to put it is uh, to say that artificial intelligence on its own, just trying to make an intelligent computer, is all very well, but you're missing a large part of what human intelligence really does include, and it, it is about emotion. I asked the public about artificial intelligence and if they think it's safe in a working environment. Yeah. You know, power cuts, you know, problems like that happen, they've, they've got no control over it, and plus it's a bit like Terminator 3. Don't like the idea of machines being able to control us. Like, we invented them, we should control them. I think the AI machine didn't win on its own. I think it's only the smartest people that programmed it, so I don't think you really could say it was artificial intelligence. It was just human intelligence in a different format. Probably just in the movies, as a way of entertaining us. That's, that's what I think. It's quite imaginative, you know. That's what I like about it. So, how do you go about researching artificial intelligence and what are the best formats in practice today? I think that the good thing about games is they act as like a really specialised kind of test bed for, um, for AI techniques. So whenever you're looking at how you actually try out some of the more advanced things you've got in AI, whenever you've got video games that commercially have really impressive virtual worlds, they have um, sort of simulated behaviour in there already. By applying some of these AI techniques into games, you get a kind of win-win. So academia gets to um, try out these AI techniques, hopefully learn a little bit from them in the simulated worlds that games provide. And at the same time, games get better because you get more interest in NPCs to interact with or more interest in enemies to play against. Well, we use uh, games as a way to, because games are a computer product which do evoke emotions in people, so they have uh, hopefully a lot of fun when they're playing games, but they're also frustrating at different times. So we'll have people come in here and uh, we have the, the, that room next door through this one-way mirror we call the living room, and it's a naturalistic kind of environment where people can play video games. We can observe them through this mirror, we can video how they're reacting, um, so we can evaluate the game, how good it is, uh, what kind of emotional experience it gives people. We can ask them questions about it, of course, whether they thought it was a fun game or not, but then we can, we can use other equipment. For example, uh, a face reader toolkit, which will read the emotional expression in real time from split second to split second. Although you can create uh, um, a computer program that has logical um, reasoning. You cannot create a program that can draw something that they decided what it is. They cannot pick up a favorite number. They cannot um, give you a random number even. 
we have to tell them what is random and we cannot even define that. So completely um, talking about IQ for programs, don't think it's relevant at all. I'm interested in the affect of computing uh, because I'm interested in artificial intelligence because of what it teaches us about people. So I'm, I don't really want to make robots for their own sake. It's doing the research is interesting because in, in order to do that kind of work, you have to understand what people are better. So I see artificial intelligence as a kind of psychology, really. The future is unwritten, but with advancements in technology and artificial intelligence, the rise of machines could be neater than you think.